pro traders and brings you only the most credible and qualified to participate on our shows. And in fact, you may have seen our next presenter on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, or CBS News. And as an added note, I remember seeing her on something earlier this week. So she's an expert stock market analyst and the founder and owner of an international educational company where she teaches how to, people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present short stocks for fast <laughs> profits is Ms. Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you hear me and see the slide? Loud and clear, and we got your splash screen up. And just for argument's sake, what did I see you on earlier this week? I was on Newsmax. All right, awesome. <laughs> but thanks for watching. <laughs> hey, it, it, it's it's funny too because you know I was visiting my mom or something. I was like, Mom, that's one of the ladies on my there show. You, you know, I know her. You <laughs> could say. <laughs> Well, I really quickly, how long do I have to speak today? I'm just looking at the clock. I don't want to go over. 45 minutes. The fact that we're over a minute or two, if you're on a minute or two over, feel free. Okay, um, I will great. send you a polite five-minute reminder in the admin chat. All right. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. What an interesting time to trade. Markets been on a tear in the last couple of days to the upside, and all of a sudden in the last two hours... The market had a big sell-off out of nowhere. There's some kind of tension going on right now, geopolitical tension with Ukraine and Russia today that made the market have a very sharp sell-off. So it's interesting times right now that we're trading. If anybody has any questions, you can just plop it in the chat. I will see it as we're going along. Today, we're going to talk about shorting, which is my favorite topic. We're going to talk about gaps, which is the methodology that I trade. And we're going to talk about making fast money which is the best kind of money to make because if you can make $1,000 in five minutes or $1,000 in six hours, which would you rather? Well, the answer is easy. So if you have any questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP and you can go to my website at www.thestockswish.com. And again, I appear on TV. I appear on pretty much every single channel talking about the stock market. I was on Newsmax on Monday talking about what's going on with the bond market right now. And of course, we had some very significant data yesterday that created a gap up in the market and a very big rally. So it'll be interesting to see if between now, today is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we have other data out, if the market's going to be able to hold on even with this negative news that we saw in the last two hours. So it's interesting times to trade. Again, whatever you decide to do, if you're going to do options, if you're going to day trade, if you're going to do swing trades, you need a strategy in order to trade the market, a strategy that is successful. And what do I mean by successful? I mean that it has more wins than losers. You need to have a higher uh, amount of wins than losses. And on top of that, you also need to have some of your winners be big winners that will cover your losses and then allow you actually to be profitable at the end of the week, at the end of the month, and hopefully at the end of the year. It's hard to believe that we're into the end of 2023. We have about six weeks left in the year. And all of a sudden, then it's going to be 2024, which is an election year. So again, I trade the US stock market, and it's very, very interesting times. But one of the things that I love about trading and why I like to trade and why I decided to trade the stock market is because trading is a great job where you have a lot of freedom. I live along Central Park. This is a picture of the park that I took actually over the summer. Um, I can go out after this lecture today and take a walk in the park. It's a beautiful fall day here in Manhattan. That's where I live. And you know the fact that you can have an unlimited income potential to trade and then also to be able to have the freedom to have weekends off, to be able to only work for an hour a day, that's the type of job that you just, there's just not that many jobs out there that you have that type of freedom. So, I mean, when I first started trading, that was really one of the bigger motivations for me because I was doing mortgages and I was working seven days a week and I was really tired of that. So it, was, it wasn't just the money with trading that I was interested in getting into the stock market, even though it does have unlimited income potential, it was the freedom involved with it. You know, a lot of people could replace their, their monthly income training in less than half the hours that they work during the week. One of the things that people find so difficult with trading, though, is they just don't know what to do. There's so many stocks out there every day to trade, and then you have to decide what direction to play them. 
So I developed my own strategy, which we're gonna talk about today, which helped me determine when I get up in the morning what I want to trade. And again, all you need is one good pick a day, one good strategy a day in order to make money. And you, you need to have that as your goal. So again, you have one goal, it's to make money, that's it. And again, if it's $500 a day is your goal, or if it's $1,000 a day is your goal, whatever your goal is. Again, if you think about it, $5,000 a day is, I mean, no, $1,000 a day is $5,000 a week, that's 20 grand a month. You know, that would replace a lot of people's income for their current jobs. And again, it's the whole idea that it's not in that much time. And I wanna stress this as well, that you can be successful trading. So I started the stock swoosh in 2012, we're going into 2024. So I've had the business now for quite a long time and I've taught people from all over the world. I've taught people that have never traded before. I've taught people that have traded longer than, I, than I'm alive. And the fact is that you can be successful trading. I think a lot of people, when they're going through the ups and downs, when they're trying to figure it out, they, they get into that negative space where they think that they can't do it. But the fact is you can do it. And if you're not successful, nine times out of 10, it's because the strategy that you're using is not a good strategy and you're not successful for that reason, that it's not necessarily you particularly. And, and again, most people don't wake up out of bed one day and all of a sudden like that make money trading. Okay, so you have to learn how to do it or you have to learn from someone like me that will teach you my strategy or you create your own strategy, which is what I did, but it took me three years, three years of my life and a, and a long time and a lot of money to, to go through that process, not knowing when I would ever figure it out. But anyways, getting back to what I was said, most people find success elusive. Why? They just don't know what to focus on. Again, there's thousands of stocks out there in the market. Do you go long? Do you go short? What should be picking? What should you do? What time do you get in? Do you get Where do you get out? You know, all of these things. And many people just don't have a system and you need a system to make money. And again, a lot of people wanna buy the dip. That's not a strategy. While it may work in a very bullish market or it may work on a particular day where the stock or the market is in an uptrend or power trending, which we did see a few days like that in the last few weeks. That's not something that will consistently work over the long haul. And again, over the long haul is what matters. It's the consistency that matters to be able to do this for a living. It's the consistency to be able to do it for any length of time at all. I mean, who wants to trade for years and years and years and lose? And yet, as I said, I've been teaching people since 2012, and I've encountered many, many people that actually do trade the market for a very long time, and they're not making money. And, and they don't want to change what they're doing. And I'm telling you, if you're losing, you have to change what you're doing, unless you want to keep losing, you know. So it's really, really important to have a winning strategy. Again, you need more winners than losers, and you've got to get the right pick. So these are the stats. Actually, I have to update these. This is through... October, so we've actually, I, I have to update these in the next week when I take some days off around the holidays. But prior to, I think it was October 4th, this is through October 4th, our stats for the year for the day trade room was 450,701. And again, these are trades that I took on margin and called in my live trading room. In other words, you would have to have a margin account to do these trades. Most of these trades are shorts. Some of them are longs. For example, we went long today. We actually went long target today, which is unusual, but we did go long today. The good gap today was target. But we have you know, good results for the year so far. And again, the year isn't over yet, but the year is close to over. Then I have the stats in here for the options newsletter, and I risk more in my options trades, which is one of the reasons why this is a greater number. This is current through the end of last week. And our stats for the year for the gap options newsletter, these are options trades, okay? So you do not need a margin account in order to trade options. You can open up and trade options with a cash account. It's over two million a year. And again, the year isn't over. So it's been one of those years where it has been a very, very profitable year to trade gaps simply because of the fact that the market's been volatile. So if you know how to trade volatility, that's good. If you don't know how to trade volatility, then you're struggling, you're struggling for the year. Um, and again, any questions, I can see them in the room here as we're going along. But as I was saying, trading requires a positive attitude. 
And very often when people are trading for a while and they're not successful, then they start to go negative. Well, you're not helping yourself if you have a negative attitude. You need to have a positive attitude. So as I was saying, I live in New York City and the first Sunday in November was November 5th, which was only about two weeks ago, was the New York City Marathon. It was the, it was the first time I ever saw the marathon and watched the marathon. And what an inspiration it was to watch people running the, the New, York, New York City Marathon. I don't know if anyone saw it. It was televised live on ESPN. 52,000 people ran the marathon this year. It was a record. It was the biggest marathon ever. It was a record year for the number of people that were in the marathon. And the, the crazy thing is that the most inspiring people were the people at the end of the race. So the guy that won, the women that won, the people at the beginning that start, started in the morning around 8 a.m., the last, last people came through at 8 o'clock at night. 8 o'clock at night. So you don't get a medal unless you finish. You must finish the race. And the most inspiring people were the people at the end. Why? Because they were they could barely walk. I mean, I, was, I literally watched every single person go through the finish line in the marathon. It was an unbelievable experience. And if you have time, go to my YouTube. You can subscribe and you can watch. I have some videos up of the race. And, and, and it's just shocking to me how people, they decide that they want to trade and they think it's just going to happen like that. They're going to make millions and millions and millions of dollars and they're not going to have to spend any money on a class and they're not going to have to have a, a, a big account and they're going to be able to do it in a week or a month. You know. The fact is that it takes hard work to be successful. To accomplish our goals and pursue our dreams, it takes commitment and hard work. Again, going back to the marathon, it's 26.1 miles. It's, it's a long race. People train for a long, long time to be able to even make it through the whole finish. And some people, some people didn't make it. Some people didn't finish. It's a level of commitment. And very often, you know, you don't see this necessarily with people with their trading. And again, it's the ups and downs of, of making the money and losing the money that people go through. But you are working against yourself if you have a negative attitude, whether it's about money, whether it's about trading classes, whether it's about, uh, you know, the stock market itself, brokers, whatever, whatever you want to say, you're working against yourself. You've got to be your own best advocate if you want to be successful. And just like the runners of the race, if you want to cross the finish line. So it was extremely inspirational for me to watch the people uh, go through everything. And again, it was one of these things where I, I know I can't wait to watch it to watch it next year because it was so, so, so inspirational. Someone's talking about a link. I don't know if that question's for me or not. I just saw it in the room. But anyways, going through what I was saying, in order to become successful, you need a system and you need a niche. And you can make money in the market. Again, you've got to be on the side of the winners. There are losers and there are winners. And you want to be on the side where you are winning. So you have to have a good system and you got to follow it daily. So what is my system? Like I said, I prefer to short. But what else? I focus on momentum. I focus on momentum in the gap. So again, what is a gap? You have to have a daily chart. You have to have live feed, live data. I set up my charts with candlesticks and we're gonna go over some charts here and you see the gap in the charts. Again, I talked about target, which is what we did today. Target was a gap up. But for me, I'm looking for the quick, quick trade. We were in and out of target today very, very fast. Every time I take a trade, I want to get in and I want to get out as quickly as possible. Five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Again, today's a great example because the market had, you know, a very nice move this morning and then it quick sold off. So if you were in something this morning and you didn't get out before the sell off, particularly if you were long, you might have gotten stopped out. You might have been up and then lost. OK. So training the morning is my expertise. Besides the idea of shorting and the focus on the shorting and the momentum side of finding the right things to trade on the, on the side of getting the big move, I focus on fast, fast trades. So let's talk about what is a gap. So again, this, this is a chart, a daily chart of the SPY. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So here's the SPY. SPY closed here, gap down, fell. So when the U.S. stock market closes at 4 o'clock, it opens the next day at 9.30 a.m. And so 
if the close is a different number than the open, that is where the gap is occurring. So in this case here in the SPY, we had a gap down. Now let's go over here. What happened here? SPY gapped up, okay? So the SPY closed here at one price and opened at a higher price. This was a gap up, okay? So again, you have gap downs and you have gap ups. I prefer to focus on gap downs. So again, this was a gap down here in the market. Now, what could you have done with this? You could have shorted it or you could have bought a put. And if you did, it worked. This fell. This was at the end of October. So I'm looking for momentum when I'm trading. I'm looking for momentum in the gap, okay? I'm looking for a big move and I want it to go fast. Okay, because again, if you're day trading, if you're here, if you're wanting to get in quick, 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 you've got to have the setup on the smaller time frame. So I actually enter my trades on the one minute chart. But getting back to momentum, a lot of people, when you know, I, I like to do options. When I'm doing an option, I want to get the move. Okay, so if I'm buying a call, then I'm buying the call because I think the stock's going to get bought. Okay, if I'm buying a put, then I want the momentum to go to the downside. A put is a short, okay? So again, I'm not trading for pennies. I'm trading for dollars, big moves, okay? That's how you can make money in the market. And again, earlier when I started the conversation, I said you must have some big winners. And in order to do that, you need the momentum. So many people are scalping. A couple of pennies here, they get in and get out quick, but they're scalping, so they're really not making any significant money. Again, if you take a trade and you're risking real money, like $1,000, $2,000 or more, you, you know, it, have to, it has to be worth it, okay? It has to be worth the risk because every time you take a trade, there's a possibility the trade may lose and you may lose your money. Now, when I take a day trade, I put in a stop. It's a hard stop, it's a limit order stop. When I do an option, I do not have a stop. The amount of money that I risk is the stop. So again, in an option, you can't lose any more than you have at risk. But every time I look to take a trade, I'm looking to take the trade in the direction of the gap, and I'm looking for something that has a high level of predictability in the directional move, all right? And preferably something that works independently of the market and doesn't need the market to work. Again, if you're someone that needs the market or you have to read the market accurately in order to get your trade to be successful, you are not having a good year this year. Because again, the market has been in a sideways range with the exception of the last couple of days when the market broke out. But the market has been in a sideways range for the last several months. And unless you're, you're, you're pinpointing exactly where the support and resistance is, you know, it's been hard for you to train only the market and do it. Now, while I sometimes do trade the market, and we're gonna talk about some market trades in here today, I'm most of the days looking for selective things that don't need the market at all. Then again, success or failure has everything to do with the quality of your system. Because if you have a good system, you know that even if you take a trade and you lose in the trade today, that tomorrow you'll take another trade that'll work. And then the next several ones will work. Again, it's the confidence, it's the conviction in having a good system that helps you proceed and helps you get to the next level and then obviously has it's something that you can be able to make money on whether you want to do it full-time or part-time. So I developed my own system. It's called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap system is something that I use to trade options. Now, I will short on margin, okay, or I will buy a put. A put is a short. Now, what is the benefit of doing options? The benefit of doing options is that you do not need to have a $25,000 balance and a margin account at a broker to trade options and you can still hold trades overnight. And you have the overnight protection, it's like the insurance, where even if a trade will go against you overnight, you have only a set fixed risk that you can lose in the trade. And then benefit is if you're in the right direction and it continues overnight, you get a larger move overnight and it continues and you get to have a much, much bigger move. And again, you have a set fixed risk, unlike being in a swing trade. And you can hold it longer, whereas when you're in a day trade, you're in and out of it quickly. Now, I'm doing the weekly options, which to me is still a very short time, to capture an overnight move in an option. So I could have put, I could have put last week's in here. I had already um, done the webinar and had this prepared. 
I could have put any number of weeks in this. I'm going to talk here about the week expiring October 20th and go over the trades that we did this week. That week actually after this, we had no losers. Every trade that I called the week of the 27th actually worked. We had a 100% win ratio. But this is really an average week. So we're going to go over the options that we did. And again, they're all based on gaps, which we're going to talk about the daily charts here. The win ratio was 80%. There were 12 winners, zero break even, three losers, and 15 trades. Now, as far as your average risk per trade, the amount of money you risk per trade is something that you must determine based on the size of your account. So if you have an account with $5,000, then you have to set your risk if you want to be able to do 15 trades. Now, 15 trades is a lot of it's a lot of trades. Some weeks we do 10, some weeks we do five, some weeks I might do more than 15. This was kind of a busy week. Again, I've been trading since 2012, so I risk what I consider an advanced trader risk of an average of $8,000 per trade. But to get the stats, to achieve the goals that we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, uh, to be on pace, to be making more than $2 million a year, this is the average risk per trade. It's 8,000. You could risk half that and still be hit over a million dollars for the year. So again, we're going to go over this one week. The average return on investment was 136%. That includes the three losers, okay, which lost completely, which we'll go over. I hold my trades and for them to work or not. And then the profits for the week were $162,100, which was a good week. But again, the week after this was actually better. Now, how did I make the picks? I got up in the morning and I rated the gaps, just like I rated Target today. Again, Target's not in here, but I'm telling you what we did today. My process is I will rate the gap. When I determine if the gap rates 20 points or more per my 26-point rating system, then I will take the stock and I will do it in the direction of the gap. So if the stock gaps down and rates 20 points or more, I will buy a put. If the stock gaps up and rates 20 points or more, I will buy a call, and so on and so forth. And any questions here, you can plop it in the room. So we did, now if you sign up for my options newsletter, you're going to get the trades. You will get the trades emailed to you in live time. You take it when you get it. Let's move this thing here. So this was Monday, the 9th, okay? So Monday the 9th in here, we did LMT. This was actually a call. Uh, here was the gap. So stock close here, gapped out, and we went long. Again, you can trade options with a retirement account because you can buy puts or you can buy calls. That is allowed in an IRA. That's something for you to look into if you want to do that to, tr to actively trade your account. This trade was a winner. It was a small winner. Um, and again, this didn't work out exactly as much as I wanted it to, but it was a positive trade. It was 25.50 was the profit. Again, 29% return on investment. We went long LMT. Then we did BA. We did this one on Monday the 9th. We did the puts, the 185 puts. So let me go back here. This was October 9th here. So again, here's where it fell, dropped. That was the BA. Oh, that was the one that lost. Now, hold on. This lost. The ninth was here. There's the ninth. Closed here, fell, dropped, and then it reversed. So this was one of the losers here in the BA. We did a later BA that's in here. That was this gap. I was looking here at the date. It was the ninth. So this BA lost. It ran out of time here. You see where this is? It was the expiration date of the 20th. So that was a loser. And I held it into the very, very last day to see if it could come back, which it sort of came back a little bit. We did another BA. I'll go over in a minute. We did the Oracle on Wednesday, the 11th. We did the 109 puts. Oracle was here. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped. Oh no, here, here it was. Sorry. That was the September one. Oh, there's too many gaps here. Here was the Oracle. Closed here, gap down, fell. This is the 109s. So this cost $1.50, sold it at 725, 
on the very last day. This was one of the biggest trades we had in the last month. I'll go back and show you on the chart there because there was there was two gaps we actually did, September and October, but this was the October one. This was 383% return on investment. Why? Because of the cost was so cheap. We were in the trade really, really early. And again, we did the 109 put. So let's go back. Here it was. So you see where this was right around 110. Okay, where I called it. I'm just taking it over here to the right so you could see where the strike is. So I called it. It was a little bit above the strike. All right, pick the 109s, and then here, it went the last day. So this big fat red bar, we were ready in the tree. We were ready in the tree. But that is why that worked so well, because it had such a big, big, big move, but it was the last day. This one over here we did do, but this isn't in here. Um, someone's asking a question. How many days to expiration usually buy calls and puts? Uh, what do you mean how many days to expiration? I'm doing the weeklies. So I'm not going to buy a put on a Friday that expires on Friday. While there are market uh, options that they started this year, by market I mean the QQQs and the SPY, you could actually do daily expirations in the market. Now this year I'm not doing those. But if I would have something that I want to do in two days from now on Friday, I'm going to do it out for the following week if I'm gonna take a trade. Even if I'm gonna get out of it on Friday, even if I decide to get out of it Friday, I will buy that extra cushion. So I'm doing the weeklies. Anyways, this was a really, really nice trade. Um, this is falling today since that news came out, just so you know. It's had a big rally, but it is falling today. This is Oracle. And we did do this in September, and we did it also in, in, in October. But again, this was the October put. If you had bought 10 contracts and spent $1,500, you still could have made, you know, almost 400% return investment. So when people tell me, well, you need a lot of money, you need a lot of money to trade. No, you don't. You could buy one contract, it would have cost you $150. The whole point of trading is that you can take whatever amount of money you're risking and multiply it as many times as you possibly can. There are people that start trading with me with small accounts and then they start getting trades like this, which you will have if you're trading with me. You absolutely will. I call big winners like this all the time. Not every day, but every month. And this is how you can grow your account. Again, you're going to have some losers like the one that we just looked at before. Oh, this is the other BA. But you're going to have some big, big winners with me. So we did the BA 190s. This was the 12th here. This was the one I thought it was earlier. This was the one that went boom. So you see where this one is here, take it over. I called it above the strike, then it fell. Closed here, gap down, fell. Closed here, gap down, fell. This was the this was the one that followed through. This cost a dollar sixty seven fifty. And again, this this was a nice trade. This was almost four hundred percent return investment too. This was the same week. So you could have made whatever you risked. Again, you could have taken ten contracts, risked sixteen hundred dollars. I risked more, but I've been doing this a long time. If you have the money, you could risk more, okay? But you could have made $35,400 with a risk of 9,600. Again, you would have had to hold this a few days. That's not a big deal. The trade was up, though, as soon as you took it. Oracle was only up a little bit, then it was down a little bit, then it was flat, then it went big the last day. This was up right away, right out of the game, as soon as we did it. So you could have held it, you could have got out of half, you could have added to it, whatever you want to do, you could have done that. Uh, let me see a quick question here. Um, why am I trading options so close to the money? Uh, because I'm trading momentum. It's best 50-50 bet, not very good odds. No, it is not. My odds of my performance is higher than 50-50. So I'm not sure what option strategy you use, whoever asked that question. My system, the Golden Gap system, the 26-point system, has is a high odds system. Therefore, that is how I'm making the picks. So no, my odds are not 50-50. Maybe that is the way that you trade. But as far as what I'm choosing, I'm doing them right at the strike, yes. I'm trading, trying to get the momentum of the move in whatever stock or the market that I'm trading. Again, you could do ETFs. 
But the fact is that, again, going back to this, the way that I'm making the choices and the options, I'm momentum trade. Same thing with my day trades. We're going to talk about a couple day trades in here if we have, we have time. Every trade I take is based on momentum, 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 momentum. You got to get the timing right. You got to get the direction right. And you got to have a big move. That's how I'm making the picks. So no, I'm not worried about all these other things somebody's writing about. Del I'm not worried about any of that. I'm not worried about any of that. And I'm not even worried if I have to pay 25 or 50 cents more than, than even the prices here. Again, the prices here that I'm showing that I paid for these, you might have paid a little bit less. You might have paid a little bit more. Depends where you got in or if you waited or if you took it the second I called it. I, I get in them quick, okay? But getting back to what I was saying, you're you're trying to get a big move. If you're paying a dollar for something and you can sell it for seven or eight, who cares? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is momentum trading, and it's one of the reasons why it's so profitable, okay? So people, again, that decide to trade options, uh, you know, th they get confused about what they're doing or they're focused on other things, but they're making pennies, all right? It's not, that's not the way that I trade options. And my win ratio is over 70% on average for the entire year so it's way more than 50. i don't know where we'll be by the end of the year could be 75 80 percent by the end of the calendar year we'll see the year isn't over but it's way way higher than 50. so again i've been doing this for a very long time but it's based on my golden gap rating system i'm not looking at delta or this thing or that thing and i'm do whether i do it at the money or whether i do it above the strike if i'm doing a put or something like that like we did a we did hd we did calls on HD yesterday. You can pull it up. It worked. Um, I called that trade so early before the market even opened. I sent the trade out an hour, maybe longer before the market opened. It kept going. I called the, the 295 calls. The stock opened at 300. It, the trade worked. If you bought the 300 calls, if you bought the 295s were ready in the money, it didn't matter. The trade worked. And again, you could even do something if you say, if you think this is too expensive. Now, these were pretty really well priced. But if I call like an NVIDIA that's expensive and, and it's you don't want to pay the price of it, you can do one farther away. If the trade's going to work and the momentum's going to go and the direction it's going to go, it's going to go fast. It's going to work no matter what. That's the beauty of trading options. I do not use stops and options because the stop is my risk. I use stops in my day trades. I'm not killing them in the middle of it, if that's your question. Um, then we did Tesla. We did a bunch of Teslas, 260. I'm just looking at my time here. I wanna, I'm wanna. i probably going to have to flip through some of these because I want to get to some other points. Um, 10, 12. 10, 12, we did Tesla. We were in this early. Again, beautiful momentum. So I did it right here at 260. Got the drop. Boom, boom. There it is. Beautiful. Another huge trade. Again, got in it on the 12th here, exited it here. So again, you could have actually made more money if you held it the last day. I didn't. I didn't. This actually came all the way down to 210 and change. This was, I called this, it went $50 through the strike from where I called this trade in the week that I called it. It's just incredible. So I didn't, I, didn't, I could have made more money on this if I'd held it. But you've got to get out of trades if you're up this type of profit the day before the expiration because anything could turn it around the last day. Anyways, this was another good one. I'm just going to flip through here. We did the Qs. Um, this one was another good one. Again, I'm usually trying to look for 100% in most of my trades. We did the SPY puts. Again, this was the same week. The SPY fell here. Um, this was another good one. We did Netflix. Uh, Netflix I lost in. Netflix, I held this until the very last day or the day before, but it, it didn't work. It was worthless the day before, and it, and it didn't flip around the next day. Um, that was one of the losers. IBM worked. IBM was a really good trade. Uh, we did the 140 puts that week. BA, we did another BA here. That, I did not make money in the BA. Uh, the second BA, 365 puts we did in the Qs. And that was really nice trade too. And then we did the SPY. I did a couple different contracts in this because the market was falling that week. Did CVX. We did calls in CVX. And that one worked. Again, sometimes I will go long. I told you we did the HD calls. 
Um, do the SPY 425 puts. Again, that was a big mover. Um, and then we did the Qs, and that was that same week, and that was a good one too. So again, overall, we had some really, 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 really big ones this week. But we also had 12 winners of 15 trades and then three losers. So I will hold my trades until they go bust. You can kill it at 50% if you want, but know that if you kill some trades that I call at 50%, they will go on to be winners. So you will take a loss in something that will go on to be a winner, and that will be your choice. That is not how I manage my trades. If I take a trade, it rates good, it rates per my system, I want to take it, I'm all in. I say the best thing to do is back off your risk. If you're worried about something that goes against you, then chances are your risk is too big. Again, it's called 100% conviction. You have 100% conviction that your trades are going to work, or you don't. Or you don't, or you don't, and then why are you even doing it in the first place? If you're wishy-washy about your trades, if you're 50-50, whoever said that, those aren't good odds. If you're like, well, it's 50-50, why are you risking your money? You worked hard for your money, however you got it, at your job, or if you're retired, or wherever you're getting your money that you have in your trading account to begin with. 50-50 is not good enough odds for me. Anyways, you need a niche. For me, it's shorting, but it's really based on reading institutional money in the market. Not all gaps are made with institutional money. So not every gap can you do. And not every gap do I do, okay? So I'm looking and actually reading it and making a decision based on the institutional money if the stock's gonna get bought or if the stock's gonna get sold off. And then that is how I determine how I wanna take the trade or if I don't wanna do it at all. If I don't think it's gonna be good enough to do. But my niche is definitely, definitely shorting. And as crazy as it sounds, considering the fact that the market is in an uptrend that's been bullish this year, we have made a lot of money shorting. I'm looking for the things that I want to short, and then we're getting the big moves. Again, we happen to go long today and yesterday, and I don't have any problem going long, but I do definitely have an itch shorting, and because I'm so good at reading weakness, then I can see what is going to work to the upside too. So I'm very selective in my picks no matter what I do, but I'm almost even more selective in when I go long because shorting is what I'm doing most every single day. Now, really quickly here, again, we've sold off here. I took this before I plopped in the room. Again, there was news out. There was news that Russia invaded some part of Ukraine and blah, 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 that created this market to lose a little bit of itself here. I don't know where we are right now today. This is going to create all kinds of panic and all kinds of hysteria and all kinds of volatility going into a week that's not over yet. We got all day Thursday and all day Friday, and there's a hell of a lot of people that have gone along, not just in the last two days, but in the last two weeks. So again, I am not long this market, just so you know. But you've got to respect the fact that the market's been rallying. I've been looking for selective things to do. So again, my niche is gaps, but it's really shorting. Now, who can short? Anyone can short. Again, you can open up an options account with $2,000 and you can buy puts and that is a sh short. So buying a put is a short. Retail traders and professional traders both can short. I don't know why people prefer to go long. I have no idea. It makes no sense to me. I prefer to short, but there are lots and lots of people that actually prefer to go long. Maybe it's because the idea of buying low and selling high is somebody that can wrap their head around more, but you can make money shorting. You can short a stock at $15 and it drops down to $12. You'll make the difference, which is what? $3 times the number of shares or the number of contract prices that you have. And that's the profit. It's the same concept, but it's going where you get the drop. It's selling. Selling that happens quick, fast, comes in. And usually, stocks fall faster than they rally. Okay? So again, that's why I'm done early. That's why I'm done fast. That's why I'm in and out of these trades so quick. And I prefer to be out of my day trades fast. Not just because you can have something that happens that messes up a trade like today, but again, you have Fed announcements. You have all kinds of things that are going on during the afternoon, and then you can have the rest of your day to yourself. And again, I used taking a walk in Central Park as an example, but many of you have other things to do. I don't have children. You might have kids. You gotta pick the kids up from school. You gotta go here, you gotta go there. You have to go to a basketball game, whatever. You have things to do. It's the idea of sitting and training and staring at charts for six hours plus a day that does not interest me. And I don't do that even with the options. If I'm in a trade, an options trade, I'm in it and that's it. And if you can't watch it, you put a sell order and you can sell it at, put a sell order at 100%. If you pay a dollar for it, put a sell order at two. And if it hits, it's a day order. It cancels you out and, and at the end of the day, if it doesn't hit, and if it hits, you're out and you made the money. But for me, I, I'll check my trades like around lunchtime and then before the close. I don't sit and stare at my computer all day. And someone's asking about stops. I do use stops in my day trades. This was a day trade we did. This was a while ago in Tesla. Uh, stock close here, gap down. This is one minute chart. We shorted it, got the drop. Boom, done. 
We are in and out in a couple of minutes. Again, this is something that I will look to do tomorrow, but I don't know what I'm going to trade tomorrow. We did something similar today to this in Target, except for it was a long, but I entered the stock and shorted this on margins. So you have to have a margin account to do this, or you could have bought a put. Again, we did do puts in Tesla, 244.85. And then we exited 244.30. So in and out, 50 cents a dollar, two dollars, whatever we can get, several minutes. We also did CLX. This was a good short. I got out of this way, way, way too early. I got out of this here. The stock fell all the way down in here, down to 120. So I exited this trade like a little bit under 125. It fell five dollars more, which is really funny. But again, I like to be out in the morning quick. So I was out in the first, you know, couple of minutes. It did fall like for the first hour and 15 minutes. It, you could have. Actually, you could have bought a put in this. You could have held this down. You could have lowered your stop. I don't tra day trade like that. But this was another nice call. And this really kept going. That was in October. But anyways, getting back to short moves, panic. That's one of the reasons it happened fast. But panic is fear. Fear creates selling. We were talking about the volatility in the market even today. Okay? People get scared. Oh, my God. We're going to go to war. Blue. And then they sell. Or whatever the reason is. You could say inflation, high interest rates, whatever. It's panic, and it goes like that. Again, if you're down in a trade or if you're up money in a trade and something bad happens, you're going to kill it. You're going to quick it out. You're not even going to think about it. And that's the mentality of people. That is like what's going on in their head. Again, it's emotions. Everybody that trades, I love it when people just say, well, trade like a robot. Do, 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 do. That's completely unrealistic. You are a human being. You have emotions. You have a brain. You have all these things that are going on. You can't, you can't possibly trade without emotions. It's not going to work, okay? I actually use my emotions to my advantage. I use my emotions that make me, give me, say, I have a lot of conviction in this. I'm going to go, I'm going to hold this sucker down. I'm going to really bang on the risk in this. That I use my emotions to help me trade, okay? It makes me better. makes me stronger. Because if you deny your emotions, you're going to just fail, fail, fail. And many people do that. They want to be robots. Just like people want to buy systems, they can plug it in and go doink, and they can think that the system's going to trade for them and they're going to make millions and millions of dollars. There is no such thing. If there was, everybody have it, and that it wouldn't work, and it's totally unrealistic, okay? You are a human being. You have a brain. Keep your brain sharp, okay? How do you keep your brain sharp? You eat good, you exercise, and you keep your stress down. I started talking at the beginning about the whole idea about positive thinking and positive concepts and how, you know, I'm walking in the park. Whatever you need to do to de-stress yourself. If it's playing sports or if it's spending time with your kids or whatever you want to do, you reading, okay? You have to do things in your life, okay, to de-stress, take it down a lot. Everybody has stress. There's stress involved with trading, that's true. But you will lessen your stress if you have a system that you follow. So I'm not like, oh, I think this, I think that. I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. If the gap rates 20 points or more, I'm doing it. If it doesn't, I'm not. That's it. Simple. Done. I'm not, again, overthinking it. It's you go with the system. The system tells you what to do. It's a 26-point rating system. This is what you'll learn in the class. This is how I make my picks. And the gaps that I'm looking for are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen in play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So by following the 26-point rating system, you have a daily blueprint to follow, to pick the stocks that you want to trade in the market. And this system is a blueprint to help you pinpoint institutional money in the stock. So again, I teach a class. I'm just going to keep going through scrolling here through the end. You can trade with a small account. We did talk about that earlier. Um, what am I looking for one to one? And we talked about having a positive attitude. I don't trade futures, whoever's asking about that. I do think it's important to have an education before you train. And I think if you're losing money, then you need to change what you're doing. And again, calculated risk is important. You shouldn't take risk for risk, risk sink. And um, any questions here? Any questions? I'm not going to read this whole thing, but the penny wise pound foolish, again, is one of those phrases that really, really goes with trading because so many people, you know, want to risk so much money with their trades and they want to make pennies and then people want to put all their money in their trading account and spend very little on education and that's wrong too. It actually should be the opposite. If you have a set amount of money that you can't open up a medium or large size account and spend good money in education, you really need the education so you know what you're doing or you need to follow someone that knows what they're doing. 
So my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26-point professional gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. It's one strategy. That's all you need to be successful in the market. This was a gentleman that actually joined before he did the class. He joined, paid for the class, then started trading. He made the money for the class before he even did it. He did the class last month in October, and he's doing very well. Uh, the class is this weekend. I know that's in a few days, but I already had it planned. I only have two more classes this year, this weekend in November and December. The class is November 18th and 19th. It's $69.99 for the class. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. This is a picture I took. It doesn't even look real. It looks like a postcard of Central Park, and I'm doing an anniversary special. I've been here one year. If you sign up by Friday, you will get the trading room free to the end of 2024, the market report free to the end of 2024 with the class. And again, that's this weekend, and I was doing an anniversary sale off of all my other specialty classes, including the options newsletter, which you can join and you don't have to do the class. It's normally six months, which is $49.99, 1,000 off through the special through Friday is $39.99, 12 months is $69.99, and 1,000 off. This is going on through Friday, which is $59.99. You could sign up today and get tomorrow's trades. Any questions? I think I'm good on time here. <laughs> Melissa, your big question is, uh, which delta do you choose on your options? I don't use any of that to make any decisions whatsoever at all. I look at the gap, I'm looking at the daily chart, and then I'm just buying the strike at the money or the closest one I can find. Cool. That, uh, that answers the question. Well, on that note, I want to say great presentation. We know that I am always thoroughly impressed with the numbers that you show us Thank and you. the moves. Thank you so much.